Good afternoon, 7th graders. This is Mr. Kashi speaking. As you can see, I will not be able to join you for 7th hour today, um, but that doesn't mean I can't teach. Uh, 1, 4, um, dividing decimals. So, I'm only gone for 7th hour today. Today is uh, September 13th, and I just wanted to go over a couple of things with you. Uh, obviously, our schedule on the board is pretty um, simple. Uh, I want to talk to you about homework first. Take two notes, just go through two examples, and then the rest of the time will be work time. All right. First off, homework. Okay, The homework that you're going to turn in today, um, you may have time later on this period to work on that homework, and you may turn it in to me tomorrow. You will also be getting an additional homework assignment today, which is a worksheet, um, and they will be both due tomorrow. So we're just going to extend the due date for what was due today till tomorrow. That being said, I would like to move on to a couple of notes. So if you could please have your notebook and a piece, uh, a, your notebook and a pencil out. We would like. I'd like to go through a couple examples. The first example is on the board. I'll take a little time so you can write that in your notes. All right. So there are zeros to use. The book calls this annexing zeros. All right. I'm not sure why they call it that, but that's what if they refer to annexing zeros, this is what they are referring to. Okay, so the first step that we have to do is make sure that our divisor is a whole number. So we are bringing that decimal over one place to the right. So now it is an 8 instead of a point 8. Now, we have to remember there's a decimal to the right of this 2 as well. And because we moved it to the right once in our divisor, we have to do the same thing in our dividend and move this one spot to the right and fill in a zero. All right. So I just wanted to remind you that there are zeros out there to use, even though you can't see them. All right. So I'd like to go through this just real quick. I want to rewrite the problem. So we have eight as our divisor, and now we have five thousand nine hundred and twenty as our dividend. Okay. So how many times does eight go into fifty-nine? Well, it should go in there six times. Six times eight is, oh, can go in there more than that. It can go in there seven times. Seven times eight is fifty-six. Okay, 59 minus 56, we get three, and then we bring the two down. Two is right there. Got to make a little more space for ourselves. Okay, how many times eight go into 32? Goes in there four times. Four times eight is 32. 32 minus 32 is obviously zero. Okay, now it seems a little silly, but we got to bring this zero down. And we have to go through this final step because our decimal was out here. We have this blank spot right here. How many times does 8 go into our 0? Well, it goes in there 0 times. Okay. And then if you want to finish it out, 8 times 0 is 0 and 0 again. So our answer would be 740. I'll try and uh, give you a little time to get the last of that down in your notes. And just more importantly than all this um, stuff in red and blue is that knowing that this zero is here even though we don't write it. You still have to move that decimal out to make it 5,920. Moving on. The divisor has to be a whole number. Remember, the divisor. So this looks very similar to our last example. Okay, I'm sure you can see the differences. But if the divisor 
is a whole number already. We do not have to change anything about this. We do not have to move this. The dividend can still be a decimal. That's fine. The process still works with the dividend having a decimal in it. But since 8 is already a whole number, we just leave it alone. We do not have to do that first step of moving the decimal with the divisor. So we jump right into it. So you go, how many times is 8 going to 59? Well, it's going to be the same process. 8 times 7 is 56. 59 minus 56 is 3. Bring the 2 down. How many times does 2 go, in, or how many times does 8 go into 32? It goes in there four times. Now this decimal is lined up. Four times eight, thirty-two, zero. Okay, so fifty-nine point two divided by eight comes out to be seven point four. Okay, I just wanted to point those two things out. That was some uh, questions I've been getting on both those two types of problems. You do not need to move the decimal. If the, div if the dividend is a decimal and the divisor is not, as long as this divisor, number 8, out here is a whole number, we can go right into our long division process. And there are zeros out here, even though they're not written. Okay? And the book calls that annexing a zero as well. All right, moving on, your worksheet today that you'll be turning into me tomorrow at the beginning beginning of class is called one for reteaching okay that's a worksheet that I'll be handing out please read the directions on it carefully I would like you to do numbers 7 through 12 on the back just so there's a little more room for you to work alright so please follow the directions carefully I'll be taking any questions about that assignment first thing in class tomorrow alright I hope uh, hope you guys are all having a good day and we will see you tomorrow